Daniela asked me if I would uh, be able to give a shiur in preparation for uh, Yom Yerushalayim. Uh, so th this is a little bit of still of a work in progress. Um, in terms of because uh, I, I had originally planned on doing something else, but um, and uh, and in some ways it might be better, and uh, which I didn't have time to do, is also to have a PowerPoint um, uh, element of the presentation, because the um, the as much as it is a halachic discussion. Perhaps even more so, it's a historical, geographical uh, type of discussion to understand where the neighborhoods <coughs> are, why that might make a difference, etc. But uh, I'll try to uh, do as best as I can um, in terms of this. I've, what I've done here, just as by way of introduction, right, to discuss, you know, you know well, let's say, why, why did I pick this topic? So Yom Yerushalayim, of course, is Bezrat uh, Hashem will be celebrating um, in... Uh, uh, in a few days, and in a way, it's sort of backwards looking. I know this is one of the elements which um, I'm not going to. I'll just mention, touch upon. But there was a there were questions between 1948 and 1967 um, as to what should be the status of the new neighborhoods when you don't have a access to the Iratika. As we think of Yom Yerushalayim as the, the, it's the liberation of Yerushalayim, but there was that period of time where you had Yerushalayim without it being Yerushalayim, um, or totally Yerushalayim. So did that make a difference in uh, terms of certain things? I'll ho hopefully mention when that was an issue. But the, so in one, in one respect, Yom Yerushalayim, our focus is towards re regaining the, the old city and regaining Har Habayit and the Kotel, etc. But the question also has to be looked at in the other direction, namely the expansion of Yerushalayim um, and its uh, continued growth. And every now and then there is a discussion um, with regard to the um, adding new neighborhoods, should uh, Bevaseret be incorporated um, into uh, Greater Yerushalayim or into the Yerushalayim municipality um, on, a, on a different level entirely, but one of the suggestions for a, uh, for a solution to the, to the conflict is for Yerushalayim to expand southward um, and uh, include Gush Etzion, that's part of Yerushalayim, um, and inc include also the Arab areas in between. And that would uh, create a completely different demographic dynamic. Are there, are there halakhic Yeah, yeah, that's what a, I'm, you know, I'm a halakhicist. I'm just giving a little bit of a... Of I'm, but I'm just saying in terms of the, all of this is... You'll get to it. We'll get to it. You'll see. The, um, but the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make is that in Yerushalayim it is um, a, a growing uh, <coughs> metropolis, modern metropolis. Um, and that is, you know, Baruch Hashem, there's been sources in Chazal which talk about Yerushalayim being the um, Mota Mashiach covering half of Eretz Yisrael. Um, the, um, and if we think of other cities, um, cities that we've uh, perhaps have come from, um, the expectation is that, okay, let's uh, just take a, uh, an example of uh, New York City. So, uh, you know, a, a little bit over 100 years ago. So Brooklyn was a different municipality um, from, uh, from New York City. Um, and now it's, uh, you know, in the smack in the middle. At what point does something become a part and parcel of that city? And now... Does, so that's on a, if you will, just in terms of uh, city planning, development, etc. And does that have any halachic ramifications? In other words, the fact that we're si standing here, I'm standing here, you're sitting here, in, uh, in Baca, um, and uh, is this Yerushalayim? I mean, uh, you pay taxes, uh, hopefully. Uh, or maybe not. Hopefully, that you know that uh, that's another question. Was, uh, my uh, my son-in-law mentioned to me this yesterday that there's a I didn't know this existed. There's a tax museum in Tel Aviv, 
uh, which apparently is done very well, I guess, with tax dollars. And the, um, but they have, one of the exhibits are signs from the 1950s that people would put up in their windows, you know, that shilamti misim, right, le midina ivrit, you know, proudly that you had the opportunity to pay your taxes. I think, you know, the government might bring those out again. Um, as the taxes go up, if they raise the taxes. But be that as it may, you know, as you're paying your taxes, but does that mean that halachically there's any uh, connection to uh, Yerushalayim uh, as such when we're in Baca? Um, so the most obvious connection that probably you all have thought about, and we've actually spoken about um, at greater length, I'll mention it uh, towards the end of the show today, is the question with regard to which day of uh, Purim should you uh, celebrate when you're here, in some of the discussions. But that's not the only halakha question that needs to be uh, examined. And as we're going to see, it's, it's not, it's not a necessarily even a new question. It's a question that goes back um, at least to the time of Bayit Sheni, in terms of it. And so... Uh, with that, to understand that how how do we take a look, you know to, how do we understand g- the growth of Yerushalayim um, from a halachic perspective? So just as by way of so that was the introduction to the introduction, and so now the introduction, <laughs> namely to understand what we're talking about in terms of the walls of the city, right? So if I were to say, okay, how do I divide Yerushalayim? I think most of us certainly I would have said. Um, that the way that we divide it is between the Iratika, the, the old city, um, and the, the, the new neighborhoods outside of the walls. But it's a little more complicated um, than that. And those neighborhoods, of course, began in the mid-19th century uh, with Mishkanot Shananim, um, etc. But the... Uh, well, I'm sorry? Ir David. Um, okay, so then there's Ir David. Okay, so now that now we have to say, okay, so that's what I think most of us would have thought of initially, right? And now the and by the way, that's what halachists um, thought of um, until relatively recently. In other words, in terms of if you were to read the uh, chuvot from, let's say, the nineteenth century, the assumption is is that Yerushalayim is the within the walls. The walls being the Ottoman walls that uh, were uh, put up in the uh, uh, 16th century, um, and that the um, and that anything outside of those walls are well, that's the question. What are they? Right? That's are they par- part of Yerushalayim? They're not part of Yerushalayim. How do I view it? There's even some uh, one of the articles that I was. Uh, looking at and, and, and researching the shear. So, points out, distinction, would, would do, uh, do authors at Postkim speak of shchunot chadashot, new neighborhoods, or do they talk about ayarot, right, towns or uh, villages next to Yerushalayim? You, know, you can take a look, you know, when, especially in the, let's say, the end of the 19th century, if you're talking about um, Mea Sharim um, as being a, a separate enclave, connected perhaps to other enclaves, so do, am I looking at that as a, a new neighborhood of Yerushalayim, or do I look at it as a neighboring village, right? Or it's, in the, it's a, a suburb, of, a very close suburb of Yerushalayim. That's probably the first and last time anyone's ever going to call Mea Sharim a suburb. But anyway, that's the uh, the way you know. How are you going to look at it? Where does the, the words Irohad Kodesh come? Oh, um, let's not get into it right now. I don't. Uh, you know, I have enough to. You know, I, 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 ho- I hope to get most of the Makorot in by the end. So let's say let's not go too far afield. But now let's take a look at the um, um, the. Um, uh, the, the, just the map that's in front of you here on the first page. Right, just to give you a, a sense of what we're talking about. So as you can see, the, um, uh, you know, the colors didn't, all of them didn't quite come out. But the, the black line, the, the jagged ba- black line, right, which um, goes, that, those, that's the current um, walls of Yerushalayim. Okay, and you can see the, the red section um, touches upon that black wall. That's the, not the outer one, but the one, uh, one line in. Okay? This is a, 
um, a map which is a it's the uh, best assumption that right now, at least according to the Wikipedia, as to what the walls of uh, Yerushalayim were at the time of Churban Bayat Sheni. Okay? Um, and there are constant uh, revelations coming on in the archaeological field, so these things can change, but this is basically the, the idea. So when I'm looking at the, that inner core, all right, the black walls, that's what Yerushalayim, the Eratika, is today. However, what, how did it develop? How did it start? So the consensus is, is that Ir David was the, um, what we call Ir David, was the, uh, the original Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim of uh, what, in Tanakh what's called Yevus, right? the, uh, the, the city that was, uh, that was occupied by the genocides by Yevusim, Right, which David, which remained a uh, an autonomous enclave during the time of the Shoftim, and David was uh, uh, able to uh, conquer it in uh, as described in Sefer Shmuel. That is the to the far right in the bottom corner where it says Ir David, um, just underneath Har Habayit, and the assumption is is that. Um, the, um, the 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 con- the extent of um, David or even Shlomo's uh, Yerushalayim is taking from that uh, that sharp angle at the bottom, going up to Har Habayit, but not all of Har Habayit. Right, that is the the, the original uh, um, topography of Har Habayit would have us uh, just including that smaller area. Um, then there is the area which is in the uh, the orange, where it says the Chomari uh, Shona, the of the Chashmonaim era. So the assumption of, I believe the uh, what is not even assumed at this point, but is accepted in the archaeological world, is that the the orange was not just the the uh, boundary at the time of the Chashmonaim, but was the boundary during Bayit Rishon as well. In other words, the end of Bayit Rishon. When, um, uh, when the, the, the Babylonians conquered the city, they would have been looking at that area that includes Ir David, the part of Har Habayit, the orange wall around. That is the, um, give or take, that's the extent of Bayit Rishon. Now, according, we'll see, uh, perhaps uh, there, there's a bit of a discussion. It's not clear from Chazal, and here's the machloka between Chazal and the Misora and uh, the and the archaeological uh, record. The question is um, how much of that was um, incorporated by David himself and Shlomo, and how much of it was incorporated only later by uh, subsequent kings. Okay, so that is. An, um, an open discussion. The, ar- the archaeolo- archaeologists assume that David, at least at this point, David and Shlomo had the smaller city, and those other areas were included by later kings. Um, Chazal and Josephus also, by the way, seems to assume that it was the um, that it was already done by David. Just to take, just to show you that it's Josephus. Um, this is just. Uh, he, Josephus is one of the most important sources for us to get an idea of what the uh, the boundaries of the um, the city was at the time of the the Roman uh, uh, at the time of the Churban. But the so here in one of those quotes he says the following: City of Jerusalem. This is the first source here. Was fortified with three walls on such parts as were not encompassed with unpassable valleys. For in such places it had but one wall. Okay, so this is the three walls. He's talking about these walls that you see in front of you here. Just to, ex- just to explain, the, the, as I said, the orange, that's what's called the Chomari Shona, the first wall. Um, and it's a question whether that is, again, from David and Shlomo or from, the, uh, from uh, later kings. Then a later, um, the Chomash Nia, that red wall, uh, which you can see, that um, 
is was most likely added during Bayit Sheni, and then a third wall, which is the larger um, black uh, straight wall, um, which goes beyond, well beyond the uh, boundaries of the current Iratika, um, that will head, will reach Bigrash Harusim, is uh, in that area, you know, is where the uh, past the where the the, the um, city hall is. Um, you know, so it's in incorporating that a, a good chunk of um, let's say Rehov Yafo um, and the area. I don't think it quite reaches um, Ben Yehuda. But that is the, the roughly the area that we're talking about. Okay? Yeah. Forgive me for my ignorance. Where would the Kotel be? Okay, so the Kotel would be, the Kotel is the, um, the, the, where it says, the, is that green area, that's the, that's the Temple Mount, that's Har Habayit. And the, the, today's Kotel um, is uh, basically the area um, the the bottom half of that, okay. The green um, goes uh, up into the Muslim <coughs> quarter, um, and you can go to what's called the Kotel Akatan. By the way, the uh, the Beit Hamikdash itself is in the is situated on the northern half of the uh, the Temple Mount. Okay, We're looking to the south. Um, so that is the, um, the so that that's the what he's talking about when he talks about the three walls, and he talks about the different hills. Fine, but if you just skip, um, and now we, we certainly don't have time to talk about the natural topography and how the, the buildings were built, uh, I mean the walls were built, to taking that into account. But if you take a look at the bold, accordingly it was called the citadel, um, or the Mitsuda by King David. In other words, and the term Mitsuda is found in, uh, in Sefer Shmuel, in Divrei Yamim, in the subsequent Nevi'im. Um, but so now Josephus is going to, so there's the Ir, Ir David, and the Mitsuda. And the question is, what is the Mitsuda? What is the citadel, <coughs> the fortress? Okay, is it a place? And uh, mo I think the most archaeologists will tell you that it is a, um, a structure um, or a complex inside Ir David itself. That's the Mitsuda. The, um, however, Josephus and presumably the, and Chazal and the, um, the, the tradition during Bayit Sheni was that that's not what it was. He was the, by King David, he was the father of that Solomon who built this temple the first, but it is by us called the upper marketplace. In other words, what David and Tanakh calls the Mitsuda. So he says, this is what we call, in Bayit Sheni, we call the upper marketplace. So we know what they call the upper marketplace. That is what we call the Rova Yehudi, or as the Jewish quarter. And the Jewish quarter is um, the, right, that's what you can see in the Hebrew here, Ha'ir al the upper city, right? That indeed, so this is the, the heart of, from the from from the point of Misora, this is the the heart of Yerushalayim. Okay, now <coughs> the um, so and other and everything beyond the orange. So that is um, subsequent um, addition. So again, so we have to now talk about okay, this that's Yerushalayim. What does it matter? What's Yerushalayim? Okay, that, uh, this is a very simple question. Like, what does it matter? So we'll skip, um, we'll come back to the, uh, the uh, sources uh, two and three, um, if, and actually beyond. We'll talk about, well, what, uh, what happens in terms of Yerushalayim? So let's go to, to number nine for a moment, okay? Just to get a... Well, I'm sorry? Exactly. Okay. Now, so now let's take the Mishnah in Kalim. This is number nine, and the Mishnah um, describes the different levels of kedusha, and it uh, talks about ten levels of kedusha, starting from Eretz Yisrael and going all the way into the Kodesh Hakodeshim. Okay, that's the the different uh, areas. In the middle of it, so there are uh, the Ayarot Mukufot Choma. Rikudeshet mimena. So the second, the first, the, the, the previous Mishnah, Mishnah Vav, describes the, some of the halachot of Kedushat Eretz Yisrael. 
And then the Mishnah says, one level higher than the rest of Israel is our cities, which are surrounded by walls from the time of, it doesn't mention this, but from the time of Yehoshua bin Nun, the idea that you have uh, the walled cities from that time. Shem, so what is the halachot? So if you have someone who is a leper, so they, the Torah tells us he has to leave the machaneh. What is the, the encampment? What is the, the Eretz Yisrael equivalent of the encampment in the desert? That is being outside of one of the walled cities. In other words, you don't kick him, that person outside of Israel, but you, you're not allowed to enter the walled cities. Um, so you are allowed within the walled cities to move a person who has passed away from one place to the other. However, yatsa once the the person has been taken out, in other words, there are no cemeteries inside the walled cities. So you have once the person has been taken out of the uh, the, the the walls, then ein machzirinoto. Then you're not allowed to. Uh, re- bring the body back into the walls. Okay. Um, the next Mishnah, Lifanim min hachoma mikudash mehem. So within the walls of Jerusalem, you know, as you had this, this Eretz Yisrael, then you have walled cities in general in Eretz Yisrael. Then you have Yerushalayim. Within the walls of Yerushalayim, it is. Further sanctified, Sha'ochlim Sham Kadashim Kalim Umaser Shene. You are allowed within the walls of Yerushalayim, if you bring your Korban, a um, the a Kodesh Kadashim, the a, the a, um, the extra holy korbanot, things like a korban chatat, a sin offering, or a an asham, another type of sin offering. Um, those can only be eaten by Kohanim on Har Habayit, and that's can subsequent Mishnayat. Okay, but Kadashim Kalim, those are the the lesser holy korbanot. Those korbanot would include Shlamim, the so-called peace offerings, korbanot Toda, Thanksgiving offerings. Um, Korban Pesach, um, a, a, a Bechor, if you bring a, 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 a firstborn animal that is brought as a Korban, those are consumed, and they're consumed not only, parts of them are not only consumed by the Kohanim, but by the Ba'alei HaKorban, the owners of the Korban. So those uh, Korbanot are called Kachim Kalim, a lot of different halachot attached to them, and they can be eaten within the confines of Yerushalayim. Because you're not allowed to take them outside of Yerushalayim to eat, but you are, um, and meaning outside of Yerushalayim can just mean walking out the gate from Har Habayit and going into um, the, the valley and to Har Zaytim across. Right? That's already outside of Yerushalayim. But, but the point is, is that you have to eat it inside the walls of Yerushalayim, uh, and Maser Sheni. So one of the tithes that is brought, and I don't, you know, just to explain, so one of the t- is will take us a few minutes, and I don't want to spend the time on it, but Maser Sheni is one of the tithes that is taken, um, the, anyone's produce. So the, after you give your 10% to the Levi, so what's called Maser Sheni, that's Maser Rishon, the next 10% is um, is set aside and has to be consumed inside Yerushalayim. That Maaser um, Sheni can be redeemed if you are not able to take your I don't know um, hundred bushels of uh, of, uh, of apples to eat in Yerushalayim. So um, you're able to um, uh, redeem them for uh, for money and take the money to Yerushalayim. And that money has to be um, used for foodstuffs in Yerushalayim. Classically, it's used for korbanot because people would go on the regal on the holidays and they would buy korbanot and things along those lines in Yerushalayim. <coughs> so there, it's a uh, so here maser sheni itself. If you're going to eat the produce, can only be eaten inside the walls of Yerushalayim. <coughs> it can't be eaten outside the walls of Yerushalayim, and also 
Um, just as a uh, additional part of that is that if you're going to redeem your produce, your maaser, and uh, and use it in Yerushalayim, so that obviously anything that you buy has to be bought in Yerushalayim and consumed inside Yerushalayim. On the flip side is that produce that's grown in Yerushalayim cannot be redeemed. It's just that, okay, so is it the... Um, uh, so that is the um, so that so you can't redeem Master Sheni in Yerushalayim itself. In Master in Yerushalayim, you have to eat the Master Sheni. So that's the extent, if you will, of the what is expected in uh, Yerushalayim. Um, there are other halachot that are attached to Yerushalayim, um, and this is um, um, the 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 the, the, the brighter. The, that's brought in the Gemara and Baba Kama. This is source number 12. Asarad dvarim nemru Yerushalayim. So there are 10 additional halachot that were mentioned in your, with regard to Yerushalayim. So I'm not going to go through all of them now. I'll just mention a few of them. So one is the, um, the uh, we'll skip the first one of Enabait Chalutba, because that'll take us a little bit a far afield to explain. Eina mevia egla arufa, ve'eina naaset ir hanidachat. So halachot that are found in Sefer Dvarim, if you find a person who has been murdered um, and you don't know um, uh, where the the murderer came from, so the city which is the closest city has to the elders bring a um, a, a, a calf, and there's a ceremony saying that our we are not responsible for this person's death, etc. So Yerushalayim is not included in that. You, you don't bring an Egla Rufa for Yerushalayim. The reason is basically because Yerushalayim is, is considered to be extraterritorial. It's not part of the uh, Nachala of any of the specific uh, tribes. Again, this is a much larger discussion. What does that mean? But the idea basically is along, you know, La Havdil, Washington, D.C. is a separate uh, area. It's not part of Maryland. It's not part of Virginia. It's a, um, a separate jurisdiction. So similarly, um, Yerushalayim is, a, uh, is a, an independent jurisdiction from the rest of the, of the tribes. And since the halacha talks about specifically Aglarufa Chad Mishvatecha, so it, this doesn't apply to Yerushalayim. Okay, fine. Now, the, uh, and then other halachot, but, the, um, but now if you skip, there are ten of them, and I'm not going to get into all of them again, because that will, you know, that's about, would take us about 15, 20 minutes just to explain all the case. But then we just say, you know, in the, um, the, in the middle of that, the next paragraph, I don't know why it came as in the paragraph, Ein osin ba ashpatot, ve ein osin ba kifshonot, ve ein osin ba ganot ufardesot, so you can't make garbage heaps and you can't have um, foundries and you cannot have gardens and orchards except for the um, the rose gardens that were there from the time of the Nevi'im Rishonim. And you can't raise chickens in Yerushalayim. And you cannot... Um, allow for a, a person um, a, if, a, if a person dies so then a, he needs to be buried um, uh, immediately okay no, it's even uh, the, 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 but that halacha applies to all uh, wherever you die but the idea of uh, extra Yerushalayim um, and this is why the, the minhag has become as, as we're familiar with that they will have nighttime um, uh, funerals here in Yerushalayim, which I'm really not going to have elsewhere. And that is because of the special halacha of Normally speaking, we allow for a, um, a body to the burial to be delayed if it's l'chvodo of the met. Right? If it is um, if, uh, uh, it's something for the dignity of that person um, himself or herself. 
Um, and then, of course, you have to define what does that mean? Uh, does it mean that people can come to attend the funeral, um, etc., so that you can have extra hespedim or what have it? But that does not apply in Yerushalayim. That's the idea, Ein Melinin Boetamet, was that even if it is Lichvodo of the, the person who's passed away, the burial should not be delayed. Okay, so that's one of the halachot of Yerushalayim. Um, a la- yeah. Does that only apply if the person's going to be buried in Yerushalayim? Okay, now part of it, and this is what you might have been able to infer from, it's not explicit here, but the, um, the, uh, with regard to the other walled cities, is that you don't have a cemetery inside, inside Yerushalayim. There are no cemeteries in Yerushalayim. And then it becomes a question, well, so now we just understand some of the issues that, are, uh, that this becomes uh, part of it. By the way, the, ra- the rationale for the, until we reach Eimelinin Bayatamed, for all those other halachot, is that it's not lichvoda of Yerushalayim. It's not um, something which is, um, uh, it, those are all either, let's say, the, the garbage heaps, the, um, the foundries, etc. So they, um, they, uh, they cause, uh, they're, they're polluting, they're, uh, there's smells that are attached to it, etc. Similarly, by the way, the Ganot and Pardes Sot, Right, um, and this is perhaps counterintuitive, it, certainly today, is the assumption is that you're going to be using a lot of uh, fertilizer, and that is going to also cause um, all sorts of uh, unpleasant aromas to be uh, arrive, uh, uh, arising, um, and that's why we don't, ha- we don't allow for that. The Tarnagolin is because they're going to... Um, uh, they're going to impact on the animals being brought for korbanot, Etc. Um, the Aimelinin by Tamed, so the Gemara wants to know, number 13, by w- w- where, where does that, or the end of thir- 12, excuse me. Aimelin by Tamed, Gemara. Whereas the Gemara gives all of the explanations for each of the other 10, um, the other 9, and then the Gemara says, well, what about, why can't you uh, have, leave a, a corpse? Uh, overnight. Why do you have to bury, <coughs> take it out and have it buried immediately? What's the rationale for that? Gemara. It is a misora. It's a tradition. That's what Gemara means. And Rashi says, Misorah hi biadeinu ve'en tam Right? There is a long-held tradition, right, that you do not keep uh, um, the, the, the dead uh, uh, any longer than uh, absolutely necessary. Um, where it comes from, we don't know. Even the Gemara doesn't know. Yeah. Are we going to stay all the time on these halachic uh, parameters? And is there some place that we can go into the Hashkafic? What is okay. the Jewish line? Okay. You know, so let's get to it. Right, well, uh, okay. So I'm talking about it? the halachic status. So we have to I, I, work, I, we're working backwards. I'm hoping to reach it. I so, so. Okay. <laughs> um, if not, I guess you'll fire me. So now, let's, let's go to the, um, okay, so now the, okay, so this is all within the context. And we have to, have to understand that when we talk about it, uh, because generally speaking, when we talk about Yerushalayim, we were only focusing on the Hashkafic stand, uh, um, perspective. So that's why I want to start with the halacha. Yeah. Could you just specify north, south, east, and west on it? Okay, so it's a, this is on a north-south uh, axis. Okay, in other words, the, 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 the top is north, the right is east, the left is west, and the bottom is south. Okay? I apologize for that. I'm not making that clear. Okay? So that's... Now, within the context, again, now, we, we have to build. Before I can talk about the new neighborhoods, I have to talk about the old neighborhoods. So now what's going on? So if you were to say, okay, what... All of these halachot, where do they apply? All right? Within the walls. Right? So the assumption would be that they apply within the orange section. In other words, the orange section on the map, that is the, ma- that is the part of Yerushalayim, all of these apply. In other words, when they would eat their korbanot, they would eat them within the orange section. What about the extent, already in Bayat Shani, they added on to it. All right, we see that. Would they eat korbanot there? That's the question. But okay. the orange includes Yerad David and Harabayit. Correct. The orange includes Yerad David and Harabayit and Hartzion of today. Well, it's outside of the walls. Or I should have mentioned that before. It was the Shiloh. All of that is there. So here, there's a discussion. So first of all, um, if we take a look at the 
is there a means to expand Yerushalayim halachically? So here, the, we have a, um, interestingly enough, there's no exact description of the sanctification of Yerushalayim by David or by Shlomo. There's no description in Tanakh of that. We can maybe draw some inferences from certain psukim, but there isn't any direct discussion. There is a direct discussion when it came, comes to Bayit Shedeh. And here is source number two: V'chanukat Chomat Yerushalayim, Bikshu et Halavim, B'chol Mekomotam Lahaviyam Yerushalayim, Laasov Chanukah B'Simcha B'Todot U'Veshir Mitzaltayim Nevalim U'Chinorot. So they reestablished the walls, the consecration of the walls of Yerushalayim, not the Mikdash. So they bring the Mikdash, the the Leviim from all of the places around to bring Yerushalayim in order to consecrate with joy, with um, with thanksgiving offerings, with song, with 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 musical accompaniment, etc. In other words, that's found, and then there's a description of that um, uh, as the parak uh, goes on. So the the Mishnah um, understands from this. The, uh, this is the source number three, the Mishnah and Shavuot. Echad anichnas la'azarav. Echad anichnas la'tosof la'azarav. So the various halachot apply whether you're in the new area of the Azara that's part of Harabayit or in the extension of the Azara, which we would say, the, looking at the Harabayit, the Mishnah is talking about, are you in that reddish area? That's the core of the Harabayit? Or are you in the extended platform of Herod? Right? So that is... The green, that's what we call Har Habayit today, right? but that is an um, artificial extension of the actual mountain. And then it talks about specifically the, the city. You cannot add to the city or to the areas, if, let's say you wanted to make Har Habayit even bigger. You could, in theory, but that can only be done Ela Vimelech Vinavi. You need the following. A king, you need a prophet, you need Urim Vitubim, you need the Kohen Gadol with all of the, whatever Urim Vitubim means, right? meaning right, we don't really know exactly what the Urim Vitubim are, but part of the Big Day Kuhuna, U Sanhedrin Shel Shivim Ve'echad, along with a Sanhedrin of 71 members, Uvishte Todot Uvishir, uh, so with also bringing two korbanot, korban toda, um, uh, and that will be consumed and one that will be consumed by fire. doesn't matter. That, that, by the way, is learned from what Nehemiah did, uh, Nehemiah and Ezra did um, in Perak Yud Bet, um, uh, along with Shir. In other words, you need all of this in order to, to do this. And then there's a description of how it's done, etc., which we're not going to get in to uh, right now. So basically you're saying there is, there's a constitution here. In other words, if you want to add on to Yerushalayim, you're able to do so, but you have to do it with a proper religious ceremony, and the proper religious ceremony has to be done with the king, with a, uh, with a prophet, and with, a, with the, the Kohen Gadol, if you will, the, the, the power structure, the, the, the three-part power structure there, in terms of the, and, and the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin and the king, you, I guess you could say, they are the temporal powers, um, and the Navi and the Kohen are the spiritual authorities. Obviously, there's overlap between those different uh, things, but that's what you need. You need Umol and a special Korban, and you can do it. Now, the question then is, well, um, the, um, well uh, did that actually happen, right? So D- David, uh, I mean, if you take a look at, uh, so David did it, and we don't, as I said, where it came from, there's a little bit of description, I'm not going to get into it right now because of the time, but those are the sources for um, uh, five through seven. But the, the question that the Gemara asks is, do you need all of them? All of the... Uh, you know, we just have this laundry list of everyone who needs to be. Or do you need all of these people, or do you need uh, a one or two of them? Right, that's the question. Right, this is the machloket between Rav Huna and Rav Nachman. These are Amor, these are Amoraim of Bavel who lived about uh, 250 years or so after the Churban Bayit Sheni, but they argue as to whether or not 
the um, you need right, the the first line in number four. Kol shelo naaseit bechol elu. The Mishnah said, if you didn't do all of this, it doesn't have kedusha. Itmar Rav Huna Amar bechol elu tanan. Rav Nachman Amar Achat Mei Kol elu. Rav Huna says you need all of them, and Rav Nachman says it's, a, it's sufficient if you have one. And what is the machloket? The machloket is did the original kedusha, the original sanctity of David and of Shlomo. Does that continue even after the Chorban? Or does the Chorban cancel out that Kedusha and now you have to reestablish it when you come in? So that's the, the, the question. The um, consensus, that's a, that could be easily be two shirim in itself just to discuss that. I'm, not, I'm just mentioning very uh, briefly. The consensus amongst the poskim, but even in the Rishonim it's a machloket, um, etc. But the consensus is along the lines of the Rambam. The Rambam says in number eight, If any area where you didn't have everything, in other words, you have the Melach, and you have the Navi, and you have the Sanhedrin, and you have the Kohen Gadol with his Urim Betumim, meaning that he has the full, all the full Begadin, etc. If you... What? Sorry? Probably both. Okay, in other words, that's probably why you need the Urim Vitumim, is that, in other words, what do you have is that you have, a, a, there's a, if, why would you need all of them, presumably? It's not just a technicality, and maybe the, I, the, the, the Deya that says you just need one is saying you need to have a representative. But here it's that you need all of these authorities to give blessing or to give approval to what you're doing. And as you're now saying, this is now harabayit. There are a lot of halachot of harabayit. You're going to kill people if they do things which you're not supposed to do on harabayit. Right? You're now saying you're going to eat korbanot in this area. Right? Which, and if you eat korbanot outside of Yerushalayim, so that's a, um, that's mitabide shamayim. Right, so you have very serious ramifications. So in order to have that, according to the day it says of all, so you need, the, it's, you need the Sanhedrin in effect to say, yes, we're signing on on this. And the king is signing on. And there's a prophet who's saying, God is saying it's okay. And the Kohen is saying, <coughs> from the Urim Betumim, because that's what the Urim Betumim is, is the Kohen's means of uh, ha- re- receiving direct divine inspiration. I won't call it nevuah at the moment, but that is what that is. So the, that is, you're, you're turning Yerushalayim. It's not just a, a municipal boundary that you're saying, okay, we're now going to uh, be taking Arnona from this area. Right? No, this is a question of major uh, halachic, hashkafic, Jewish uh, values. So that requires everybody to be on board. That's the idea. Yeah. Wouldn't there be an extension of this Okay, so now we're talking about it. So you, yeah, let me get let me get to it. Uh, okay, otherwise I'm going to have to extend the shear too. So now the um, so this is this is what we're what we're talking about. So now the the, the kedusha is so the Rambam says you need all of that. Why? Because the kedush the original this is the downside the the the, up, the, 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 the parallel the kedusha the original kedusha continues. Was because after all, in ha, in Bayit Sheni, we see Nehemiah, Ezra, so consecrated the walls. That has clear halachic um, ramifications. They ate korbanot throughout Bayit Sheni inside Yerushalayim. So now, if that's going to be the case, how did they do it? So if you needed everybody, they didn't have a king when Ezra did it. They didn't have. They had prophets still, maybe, but they didn't have um, the Urim Betumin, right? When the Chashmonaim came uh, come around. The Chashmonaim have a king, right? They have a Kohen, they have a Sanhedrin, but they don't have Urim Betumim, and they don't have a prophet, right? So how is the Kedusha working? So the answer is, the Rabbi says the original Kedusha works. The original Kedusha holds, and what happened with what David did? I mean, this is what the Nehemiah did and, and Ezra. That, the Rabbi says, was only done the um, within as a um, um, the w- was done as a zecher zecher husha'asa the second line he did they they only did it because after all we want to rededicate Yerushalayim we want to rededicate the mikdash halachically 
it's meaningless. But, as we all understand, right, if I say to you right now, okay, where we are in Baca, is that you can't eat a korban. Are we in Yerushalayim? So for all of us, we'll say, yes, of course we're in Yerushalayim. But we want, the, even areas, the, 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 but it's, and certainly if you're rededicating the wall, so it doesn't have halachic ramifications, but the fact that you now come in 1967 and you return to the Kotel, so that is something which has tremendous um, significance, um, which goes beyond the technical halachic uh, necessity to do it. So that is the idea that is going on. So, the to- so here you see already in the Ketuvim that we give credence to, if you will, psychological, national, um, uh, um, ideological uh, validity of a, uh, of a place, even if on a uh, narrow, halachic, narrow halachic terms, it's unnecessary. So, there, so it's very important for Ezra and Nehemiah to be doing this. So the Rama says, halachically, it did nothing. In fact, you could even say, and the Gubar does say that, said the Rambam brings us to the halacha, that if you don't have any walls, and you don't have a Beit HaMikdash, and you don't have any boundaries, can you bring korbanot? So the answer is, technically, yes. You can bring korbanot today. You, there are other problems, another shear, right? But, in terms of doing it, but in principle, yes, you can bring korbanot today on Har Habayit, um, because it, without any Beit HaMikdash, or with there being uh, a dome where the Kodesh Kadashim stood, you can still bring the korban, right? But the, because of the Kedusha is still there. The, now, what about the other areas? Okay, so here, the, the, the Tosefta, number 10, describes additional expansion, because if I'm locked in here, I would say the following. Whatever existed at the time of David, or whatever existed perhaps during the time of Bayit Rishon. In other words, if you say that there was expansion of the city, which we know there was, expansion of the city during the time of Bayit Rishon, and that was dedicated with the full regalia. You had a king, you had Medivim, you had Sanhedrin, you had Urim We don't have a record of it, but okay, so it wasn't mentioned in, the, uh, in, in Tanakh, but it happened. So we can assume that it happened, it was done properly. That has Kedushad, certainly that's what they did in, uh, during the time of Bayit Sheni, assuming that. But now you add additional neighborhoods, you have all of those extra walls, those two different walls that I mentioned in terms of that, just, that, that existed in the city. So can you eat Korban out there? Can you not? So here, the, um, the, 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 the Tosefta says the following. Abba Shaul Omer, number 10. Shnei bitsuin hayu biyushalayim hatachtona v'el yona. So the term bitsuin is a little bit hard to uh, translate. Could be, might mean marshes. I uh, don't know many marshes around Yerushalayim. It could be a, um, most likely it means a, a depression, right? It's some uh, uh, crater type of area. Be that as it way, the upper and the lower, the lower, the lower and the upper. So the, the the lower one was had was consecrated with all of these uh, things. But the the upper one was not. The Chavirim Kadashim Kalim Avaloma Aser Shedi. Without getting into the re- re- reason for why there was a distinction, but that area basically had Kedusha, that, that extension, because it had been um, properly uh, incorporated. Ha'el Yona Shaloaita Kedusha Takimura. However, the upper area. So we'll say, for argument's sake, just for simplicity, is that basically the, um, again, we don't know exactly, there's a, a description in the different articles is try to figure out what the Tachtona is referring to and what's not Tachtona referring to. So, we'll just say for argument's sake, because it really doesn't make that much of a difference to me right now, the, the, the red area will say that's the Tachtona. And the Elyona is the other areas outside of the red area to the third wall. Right? There are those who say, no, it's not the red area, but it's the area, an, an, a, an additional area where it says Mayana Gichon that was added on to Ir David. Okay? That, uh, that could very well be. 
but it doesn't matter to me. That upper area doesn't have Kedusha. So now the, um, the, the, the bright to ask the following. Why then, what, do we call it Yerushalayim? There's, there's a, um, it's a little more, uh, a, uh, the, you have to use the reading of the Bavli in number 11 to understand that last line fully. But basically the, what the Bavli understood that line to mean was the, the, the Breiter was asking, why call it Yerushalayim? If it doesn't have halachic import, why call it Yerushalayim? Why th- just call it? I don't know. Um, you know, uh, uh, call it. Uh, you know, well, s- South Ramallah. I mean, w- w- you call it whatever you want, right? But don't call it Yerushalayim. Okay, so why call it Yerushalayim if that's the area? So the, the has a, the Bavli has a b- wonderful answer. Mipnei shetur pashal Yerushalayim, the weakness of Yerushalayim. This is number eleven. Haita v'nocha hi likavesh visham. It's r- relatively easy to conquer Yerushalayim from there. What does that mean? So the topography, right? We're familiar with the topography. If you take a look, the, 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 the Naviv, it says, Mitzafon ti patachara. The north, the, the evil will start from the north. Right? Why does the evil start from the north? Because, so you could say, well, the Babylonians are coming from that direction. Right? And that's the, what the Naviv means. And that could be. And the Assyrians came from the north, etc. But the, also from the topography of Yerushalayim, and you can see it from today's city as well. Right, this is the, um, the, you have the, the sharp valley of Geben Hinnom to the south of Yerushalayim. Right? The, the area that separates Yerushalayim from Ir David, right, from the walls, today's uh, Shar Ashpot, from the uh, going down. So you have that very deep valley, and the, um, and the, the area of Hartzion, which remember was originally in the walls, so the valley goes down from from there, so it's very hard to hit, to conquer Yerushalayim from that side. The, the um, so that's that side. You have the on the western side, where let's say where Sharyafo is. So again, you have that valley that you have to go down. There's the bridge from Mamila today, so you don't have to go down into the valley and then back up. <coughs> but you know, from, from the natural topography, if you're going to conquer the city, it's not so easy to scale that side. On the eastern side, where Har Habayit is, so you have the Kidron Valley, and that's also a very steep valley. On the northern side, where today's Shar Shechem is, <coughs> right, um, and, and further north, there is no natural uh, boundary. Words, if you are going to be a conquering army, and unfortunately we know there were many, so if you're going to be a conquering army for Yerushalayim, you're going to do it from the northern side. Because you don't have to deal with, you only have to deal with the wall. You don't have to deal with the topography of scaling up a cliff to get to the wall. Okay? So, that's, so now what, the, what the, the Breitah is saying, this was incorporated in the areas of Yerushalayim. Why? Because the second wall, that's the, the Chomash Niyah, the Chomash Lishit, this adds defensive strategy. The third wall, by the way, was only finished about uh, within a decade of the destruction of Yerushalayim. It was finished as a means to uh, defend Yerushalayim from the, from the Romans. When, um, when the Greeks conquered the city the, in the, the pre hashmonaim times, they conquered it from the north. Babylonians from the north. The, um, the, um, the, the Romans, when they took control, Pompey, uh, in, uh, in uh, 63 BCE, so and he t- takes over the, 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 the and, and, you, and at that point, we lose our full independence. So that happens from the north. All right, so here, they've added th- this to Yerushalayim in order to protect Yerushalayim. And the, what the Bright is saying, that's sufficient. Forget about halacha for a moment. You can't eat korbanot there. And you can't eat your Maser Shani there. And today, by the way, the question of if you have Maser Shani, can you do, since we re- all of us redeem our Maser Shani, can you do it from there? So you, the only area which it's clearly you can redeem your Maser Shani is 
outside. I mean, that, that you that um, that even within the walls, as you can see, um, again, within the, if you're in the the Christian or Muslim quarter today, right? There's a machloket between the poskim as to whether you can redeem your Maaser Sheni there. Is that include, considered to be Yerushalayim proper? That not considered Yerushalayim. Proper? But area that within walls cannot can be considered not Yerushalayim proper, but it is Yerushalayim because Yerushalayim is needs the natural growth and the natural defenses for Yerushalayim to survive. That's what the the Brita is saying. Now I have three minutes left, so I can't talk about the um, some of the the finer points. I will just mention the two things. One is that these halachot, by the way, through the years. Have have, uh, have popped up. So, for example, the um, the remaining halachot. The question becomes: Well, do these other areas that we talk about, these ten different things, do they apply uh, bismanenu? Now, this question was already was asked when the walls existed, the, when Yerushalayim was restricted to the walls in the 16th century, let's say. So there's a machloket as to whether you can plant trees inside Yerushalayim. One of the shitot goes so far to say you, if, that if you were to plant a palm tree in Yerushalayim, you can't use the lulav that came from that palm tree on Sukkot because it would be a mitzvah habab avera. Right? Because you violated the sanctity of Yerushalayim by planting that tree. And so anything that came from the tree can't be used for mitzvot. Right? And other day I'll say no. In the modern era, right, the, the, this question, when Meir Sha'arim, I don't know if to, today, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it still exists. The original plans for Meir Sha'arim included a public garden. And the newer neighborhoods, all the other newer neighborhoods of Yerushalayim had various gardens and public parks. Meisharim never did. Meisharim, there, there was a period of time where it did, and then it was neglected and never was replanted. But basically, the Meisharim, the the assumption was based on those 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 opinions that I mentioned the, the, the here in the Makarot that those didn't apply anymore. And I was excuse me, the the the, the Greater Jerusalem. Once I call it Greater Jerusalem, so these halachot do apply to that extent. Whereas the question, for example, of halana tamet, right? If you're talking about the uh, um, a, 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 a very practical halacha, do we? So we're familiar with the fact that within Yerushalayim as a whole, right? The um, the funerals are expedited. Within the, but if, but the consensus is that from a legal perspective, a halachic perspective, the din of halanat hamed only applies within the walls of Yerushalayim, um, of the Iratika, um, and uh, the, but, and outside, it doesn't. So, uh, for example, if Shlomo Zalman received a question about creating a new cemetery um, within the boundaries of Yerushalayim, and he said, Halachically, Yerushalayim is the Iratika. Right? Everything else is an expansion of it. But, and then, of course, is the much larger discussion, of, as I mentioned at the, the beginning, and I didn't reach it, and I'm not going to go into it now, is the question of how do we deal with the new neighborhoods with regard to the 15th day of uh, Adar in terms of reading the Megillah for another time. Bezat Hashem next Purim. But, just mention one thing, and getting back to the, the last line of the Tosefta, and this is, I think, the most important area, the, the most important thing, which is, I, to my, the Aniyut Dati is something which is really, really neglected in all of the discussions and all of the celebrations of Yom Yerushalayim. And to my mind, the Tosefta, I think, agrees with me, um, is the most important, right, about uh, Yom Yerushalayim. You know, um, I wasn't here. I was, uh, you know, five years old in the uh, in New Jersey. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me, three years old in New Jersey um, at the time, 1967. But the um, sorry, and I don't even remember the war. But the um, as of 1969, that's why I said five years. I thought that 1969. Just a Jerusalem post. There was one traffic light in all of Yerushalayim. Okay, I don't, and I believe that it was installed after 1967. I'd have to do the uh, four, okay. The one was 
at the corner of um, Yafo and uh, at King George. Okay, and, uh, that was the only traffic light in Yerushalayim, and that traffic light stopped working every night at at 9.30 or 10 o'clock and started just flashing, okay? That was Yerushalayim. Whereas Yerushalayim before 1967 was a beleaguered um, border city which uh, cut in half, you know, and you can, you know, <coughs> any teal, uh, you see if you're walking by uh, uh, Hadassah, Hartza, um, Hadassah in Karem and you're walking there and you can clearly, very easily see the, how narrow the Jerusalem corridor is um, and you see um, Nebi Samuel to the north, and you see Gush Etzion to the south, and you know that that was all Jordan uh, pre-67. Um, the incredible miracle of Yom Yerushalayim is the last line of the Tosefta. Namely, that that is the, the Turpashal Yerushalayim. That is that here, Israeli society as a whole is completely different because Yerushalayim is a city with a million plus residents with, a, with the borders that are, that are open with all the problems that we have now. Not chas v'shalom minimizing any of those problems and, they, if, if, and some of the things that are going on only drive the, that point home even further. But the idea that we have a completely different way of our, the way that we treat not only Yerushalayim, but Eretz Yisrael completely differently because of the miracles of, uh, of 1967. So the idea that, yes, of course, Yerushalayim, ask me, halakhically, is Ramot part of Yerushalayim? Is Gilo part of Yerushalayim? Is, is Piskat Zev part of Yerushalayim? If it expands out to Malaya Dumim to the east, to Vivasaret in the west, is that all part of Yerushalayim? The answer is, the fact that we call it Yerushalayim, yes, that makes it Yerushalayim. And maybe some of the halachot apply, and maybe some of the halachot do not apply, because, if you will, the technical halachic minushe of understanding the way these things work. But the larger idea, and the fact that we call it Yerushalayim halachically, that was a question that was raised um, 2,500 years ago, and uh, is just as relevant today. So here at Sun, we should be zocha that all of that Yerushalayim will have the kedusha of the Nevi'im, the Urim Betumim, the Melech, and the Sanhedrin. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah.